For those of you who don't know, tavola means table in Italian. My mom used to say it out loud every time we would get home. A tavola, meaning the table's ready. So once I saw the sign while walking down on 9th Avenue during a cold day in January, well, the cold suddenly got less harsh and it brought me back to my childhood. Oh, let me introduce myself. My name is Giancarlo and I'm originally from Castelvetrano, a small town in Sicily, back in the old country. As I was saying, I see tavola and I immediately feel hungry, so I'm about to get into the restaurant. But guess not what happened. Sorry, we're closed. Oh, avete chiuso? Beh, siamo chiusi a quest'ora. No, no, capisco. Stavo solo guardando, ma... Sei italiano? Sì. Di dove sei? Io sono di Castelvetrano, lei? Veramente? Sì. Anch'io. Nicola. Piacere di conoscere, Giancarlo. Mm. Va bene, entra un po', facciamo un piatto di pasta. No, non voglio disturbare. Non entra, non ti preoccupare. Sei Vai sicuro? Non entra. Grazie, grazie. Come in. Have a seat. We have a Nero Dollar tonight from Lager Bailey from Casa Vetrano. Is that your favorite? It is. It's going to pair really well with what we're about to have, which is like pasta with pesto trapanese tonight. Okay, cool. Hello, paese. Hello, paese. Hello. I'll be right back. Oh my god, this place is terrific. Look at the interior design. It almost feels like a movie set. But guess what? It's not. It's an original Italian-American restaurant dating back to the beginning of the previous century. Wow, fascinating. Aperol. Reminds me of that famous Italian drink, the Aperol Spritz. You know it was invented in Sicily? No, I'm just kidding. It was invented in Venetia, a region located in the northeast of Italy. Parma. Been there. Nice place. Grosseria. Well, that's a word made up typically by Italian-Americans back in the days. They like to give a little twist to English words to make them sound more Italian. So grocery became grosseria. Nick, someone's at the door. Oh, we're closed. Hi. Hi, sorry, we're closed. Oh, we're just coming out for a little bite. I know, but I'm having dinner with my brother. We have another restaurant two doors down, and they're open. This tabolino. Alright, great. Let's go there. Alright. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Bye. Hey, Gianca. <laughs> Pasta di casa, pezzo trapanese. Oh my god. Ah, adesso si mangia bene, eh? Dammi un sicuro. Dammi un minuto, eh? Sì, sì. Adesso qua. Qua, qua. Adesso ci mettiamo qua vicino a te. Lo mangeremo insieme. Ma certo. Paesani improvvisti stasera, eh? Non lo posso credere. Questo è proprio pasta, si, oh, anche si chiama pasta della carattera del nostro paese. Quindi il pezzo da noi si fa con le mandorle, a posto del, delle pinoli. Anche c'è un po' di finocchietto, anche un po' di pomodoro fresco. È tipica della nostra zona, diciamo, sì, no? Sì, no, è vero, la posso... Quindi questa ricetta è di mia madre, esattamente. 
Allora, grazie mille per questo. Prego, ho piacere conoscerti anche stasera. Alla salute. Au paesi. Au paesi, ha ragione. <ride> Mamma mia, this is unbelievable. What recipe? This feels familiar. So, I feel like my mother used to make the same pasta. Well, shape. you know, it's a traditional family recipe. It's a little bit more piquant, it's a little bit sharper. And also we use pecorino cheese. Whereas oh, in, pecorino. I, I love that one. That's, <laughs> that's one of my favorites. That's a little sharper, right. Whereas in Genova, they use a combination of both. A little bit of pecorino, a little bit of parmigiano, and this is straight pecorino. I'm so, surprised how, you know, she was telling you the, the recipe, because yeah. my mother, she would not tell it to anybody. I come from a family of chefs. Some of her brothers were, like, really great chefs. I was lucky to come from a family that were really uh, into, like, sharing the recipes, in a sense. So. Absolutely. I mean, but I'm glad you, you got to enjoy it. When I found out you were from Castelvetrano, that was probably the only reason why I opened the door. Otherwise, it probably wouldn't open the door. Chances. And so we started talking about whether you should eat pasta with a spoon or not. You know, for the Italian Galateo, which is a guide to what one should do or avoid in ordinary social life, eating pasta with a spoon is considered bad manners. But you know what? I mean, get so hot. We are in the US, so we don't really care about that. But you're, you're the one who selects every single one. Yes. But you know, I have a lot of help. I have a great crew. I have a lot of really talented people that work with me because it's a big operation. Oh, I, mean, I can imagine. I mean, look at the restaurant. It's, yeah. it's pretty authentic. I feel like I'm in back in the old country. Yeah, it's interesting because the people that had it before me, before I took it over, uh, it was an Italian-American family, the Manganaro family, and they were here for 135 years. 135 years. Yeah. The same family was here the whole time. And um, so... If you can imagine, they didn't change a lot of things. So when I took it over, it was almost so, sort of like a living museum in a sense. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you could tell, look at the ceiling. Yeah. It just looks pretty, you know, I, I don't think they changed it. The no, looks we very... kept as much as we could, but yeah. it was a double-edged sword. When you have something that old, it's great because you get to keep some of it, but some of it was crumbling the, mo the moment you touch it. But for instance, these shelves are over 100 years old, and the storefront is intact as it was, like, more than 100 years old. There's actually a book that actually documents this. It was actually, they, they wrote a cookbook, a family cookbook. Maybe I should study this. They found, like, later on. And in this cookbook, you actually have black and white photos going back to almost 80, 90 years. And you actually see the same storefront, the same doors. Are in the cookbook. So there's proof that it was there. This door is 100. Yeah. Uh, and the people were born here, they died here, they married here, and they had children here. And some of the family actually lived in the building for a long time, so it has a lot of history. And I still feel the presence to some degree, like, around me. They also had a lot of fame in their time. So this is once a little Italy. Like, there were a lot of little Italy's in New York. This is one of them. Uh, it was a small one. But this is, like, the main store of the little Italy at the time. And Esposito Meat Market on the corner was a butcher store. And there were different fruit stores Michelin. and bakeries. And my July. A lot of um, opera stars used to come here to eat, like a lot of sopranos. And the family would like cook like food for them in a small back room, and different types of people would actually have like private parties back there. It'd be interesting to see Enrico Caruso. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine, right? He was probably here at the time. I'm, I'm sure. sure he was. Right. We have a lot of foreigners that come here, and the minute they stop in front of the restaurant, they recognize a certain kind of like old charm that's kind of Italian European, so they recognize they come in. As opposed to like Italian Italian Americans or Americans that are outside of New York, a lot of times they'll stop in front of a restaurant and they're looking like what is this? It's like not Italian. What they know to be Italian is more like Olive Garden outside of New York. <laughs> like, I know what you're talking not, about. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so they'll say, we don't, we don't, there's no chicken parmesan, there's no <laughs> fettuccine alfredo. So, so Europeans actually understand this more in a sense. There's never been a time and place in history where you have so much culinary wealth in one city at one time from all over the world. So it's really cool. Um, so I mean, yeah. once I walked in, I looked at a tavola. I was like, what is this place? And I look at it, and once I look, you know, from the inside, something kind of pulled me in. And I'm really grateful for the whole meal and the whole... No, it's a pleasure having you tonight. I'm enjoying the conversation. I'm glad you came in. Thank you, likewise. Thank you. Ah, pasito di panzelleria. Pasito di panzelleria. Della Sicilia. I love that sound. Mm. 
This is actually made with grapes, so actually made into raisins in Pantelleria, and then they press them to make a dessert wine. It's sweet, but it's not too sweet at the end. It has a certain characteristic, and it's only made in that part of Sicily, in that island. And it goes well with biscotti. So the biscotti is made all over Italy. In Sicily, they kind of make them with a little bit of aniseed and almonds, which are very traditional of the Arabic influence, in a sense. And it goes well with the sweetness of this particular wine. Hello, Paese. Grazie. Hello, Paese. So, so. Oh, man. I think I already had too much wine. Just like you described it. Yeah. It, you have to, I don't know, you have to write a book. Have you ever thought about it? <laughs> no. Because, you know, it's, it's a different thing to be a chef, but it's a different thing to also describe it well. You, you just speak art, man. Oh, it's, thank it's, you. It's amazing. I have a passion for it. It's easy because it has so much history from so many different cultures on that island that reflects on the food as well. So, um, Siamo fortunati. Esattamente. <laughs> Piacere. Oh, grazie. Giancarlo, un biscotto. Eh, grazie. A nostra conoscenza. A nostra conoscenza è stato un piacere. Dear Nick, thank you so much for everything you did. I oh, really you're appreciate welcome. It. I'm going to take my family and we'll come back for sure with I more hope people. So. <laughs> it was cool being here. So, you. thank you so much again. And you uh, well. Yeah, you too. Thanks. Right. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you. Grazie. Buon ciao, buon ciao. ciao. Martin Scorsese once said, if your mother cooks Italian food, why should you go to a restaurant? You know what I would tell him? Perché in ogni ristorante italiano che si rispetti c'è sempre lo zampino di una mamma.